Home manufacturing has now become more and more capable, with tools like 3D printers and desktop CNC machines that allow anyone to build amazing projects without needing a full workshop or crazy expensive equipment. Still, these machines work off a CAD model and one of the biggest challenges when designing items to machine or 3D print is reverse engineering existing objects to base your design around, often involving measuring key features and referencing the design of pictures, with low precision and a super tedious workflow. This problem showed up recently when I got into FPV drones. In fact, I got these goggles that unfortunately don't fit me at all, with the facepad leaving a huge gap of each side of my face and resting all the weight on my nose. A perfect solution would be modeling a completely new facepad with the exact shape of my face, but replicating this component and especially my face in CAD is extremely hard due to the complex curves and the absence of a clear way to measure critical features. This is exactly the application for a 3D scanner, which is capable of scanning the object and create a digital 3D replica that can then be used to precisely locate and measure critical features. The specific scanner I'm using is the RevoPoint Miracle Plus, which is an easy to use standalone scanner that guarantees great accuracy without the need to connect it to a PC. To replicate this facepad, I've first scanned the goggles, creating a digital replica that can be later used to model the facepad around. The process is very straightforward, with the simple and intuitive settings to choose from all clearly labeled and nicely explained in the various video tutorials that you can watch straight from the device itself. For this scan I choose the most accurate setting possible, turned off color scanning and scanned without markers, since these goggles have enough features to not require them. To guarantee the best results I placed the goggles on the included turned table and used the near mode. Starting with the scan, we can see how the scanner guides you in every step of the way, with this top bar showing if you are at the correct distance from the object to guarantee the best results. On the left you can see the IR and color camera preview, with the ability to manually adjust exposure to guarantee that even the darkest of details gets captured. On the right you can instead see the real-time point cloud scanning with also all the controls and menus. With this scan completed we can just press on a one-click edit and the software will automatically generate the mesh from the point cloud. As you can see the result is quite nice with all the small holes nicely captured and the surface of interest perfectly replicated. The front of the goggles didn't get scanned on purpose since I won't be needing that, so I've just removed it by highlighting it and pressing delete before closing all the holes with the dedicated tool under the mesh tab. This creates a closed mesh that we can then export as a 3D model to print or import to any 3D modeling software. Obviously I wanted to create a perfect facepad custom made for me, so the next step is to 3D scan my face so that I can use it as a mold to model the new facepad around. Fortunately the screen on the Miracle has the ability to swivel upwards to allow you to do selfie scans, and using the same settings as before I managed to easily pull off this very accurate scan, perfect for using as a mold to form the new facepad around. I want to clarify that the learning curve with this scanner was actually very steep, at least for me. In fact, it took some trial and error to get to these nice results. That is probably because this is the first scanner that I ever own, and I didn't think that the scanning results were so dependent on the object that you are trying to scan. In fact, if the object is too dark, too reflective or even too symmetric, the scanner simply won't be able to scan it, and it requires the use of markers or even of a special spray which makes its surface a uniform light grey color. 
This is not an issue related to this specific scanner, but it is something that affects every other 3D scanner out there. And that's because these problems are all related to how they work. In fact, all 3D scanners work by reflecting light off of the object that you want to scan. And I think that it's obvious that if you want to scan, for example, a mirror, that's impossible because the light doesn't get scattered when it hits the object, but reflects perfectly away from it. A similar issue will occur when trying to scan a very dark object. In fact, most of the light that comes out of the scanner gets captured by the object and doesn't reflect back to the scanner, which also makes it very difficult to point out small details in the object. If the object is instead too symmetric, the scanner will simply not be able to orient the different scans with each other, and this requires markers to keep track of the orientation. With that said, the miracle makes the whole process as easy as possible, and I haven't found myself in any situations where I didn't know what the next step would be, especially thanks to the previously mentioned tutorials, which are included in the device and guide you through every step of the procedure. Anyway, with the goggles and face models completed, I've imported them in Fusion 360 and quickly designed the face pad around them, using the two scans to get the exact shape needed, and I printed it out of PLA. I know that PLA isn't the best materials to be used in this case, since it is very rigid, but I actually found that uh, with the face pad having the exact shape of my face, it actually was extremely comfortable. Distributing the goggles weight across the whole contact area with my face, also completely eliminating light leaks and making it truly a pleasure to fly, even for long periods. The drone I'm flying is the DJI Avata, but if you are familiar with this drone, you might have noticed that this is not the original drone. In fact, to solve the ridiculous uh, fall out of the sky problem which this drone uh, has, I've made an upgraded carbon fiber frame to increase its size and making it way more stable by spacing out the props more with each other. In replicating the original frame, this scanner turned out to be fundamental and made it possible to design the whole frame in just 3 hours, something that would have taken at least one week without this scanner. Eliminating also all the trial and error that often is involved when reverse engineering something as intricate as this frame, with all the complex details and features. Another project I used this scanner for regards my racing simulator. In fact, I wanted to design some kind of fan duct that directs air from a fan placed behind the steering wheel to the back of the motor so that it can nicely cool the motor windings, saving the motor from overheating. Due to the tube being round, I had to use markers to help the scanner keep the correct alignment, and I proceeded with the scan. As expected, all the scans I did turned out very great, and since I made three scans from different orientations, I can merge them with the appropriate tool, to create a single scan that can be imported once again in Fusion 360, and be used as a reference to design the fan duct around. Printing that out, we can see the perfect fit created, with the duct leaving a gap of less than 1mm from the back of the motor, ideal for wasting as little airflow as possible. This modification finally allowed me to turn the force feedback power up to maximum to finally take advantage of the full 15Nm that this wheel is capable of, improving driving immersion once again. In this video I've just scratched the surface of what this scanner can actually do, but this set of features and the capabilities it offers are endless and I still have to learn how to use them all. It can also for example scan colors to create a textured model, especially useful if you want to use it to create props for special effects or video games for example. It also has the ability to scan very big objects, like an entire car for example, and the fact that it is standalone and very portable makes it extremely useful to scan things outdoors where you don't have a PC available. I will be definitely using this scanner again in the future since I have some very big projects planned involving cars, and even a quick and rough scan can save an impressive amount of time and guarantee high precision.
This scanner comes in at a quite hefty price point of more than 1000 euros, but the ease of use and the precision it offers fully justify the price, at least in my opinion. Especially considering that less expensive scanners might require a 1000 euro plus PC just to be used, while this one has all the processing power integrated into it. Thinking about uh, some downsides uh, that uh, I encounter, I can't uh, really find any major ones. The biggest one being the heavy dependence uh, of the scanning results on the object that you want to scan. But that's, uh, as I said, something that affects every single 3D scanner on the market. With that said, I truly suggest you get a 3D scanner if you're into any sort of 3D designing or home manufacturing mainly due to the huge amounts of time saved, the improved quality of the project and the improved precision which makes it very much worth the investment. You can find a link to this RevoPoint miracle in the description below. That's it for this video, I will catch you in the next one!